Hello, hello, hello. Jojo here again with a new group of friends to tell you some more interesting stories. So, did you take my advice and catch up on your reading? You did? Ah, oh, it makes me feel so good. Chika puku, chika puku, chika puku, chika puku, puff puff, ding dong. <laughs> Do you know why I did that? Well, it's because our first story is about trains. And to tell you the story, here's Keshawa with a little engine that could. Chikapuku, 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 puff puff, ding dong. Chikapuku, chikapuka, puff puff, ding dong. Chikapuku, chikapuka, puff puff, ding dong. The little train chugged merrily. The trucks were full of toys, dolls, chocolates and sweets for the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain. Suddenly, the train stopped. It could not move an inch more. Soon, a shiny new engine passed by and all the toys and dolls said, Please, shiny new engine, please pull our train over the mountain. Our engine is broken down and the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain would have any toys, dolls, chocolates or sweets unless you help us. The shiny new engine said, Pull you, I am a passenger engine. I pull big fine trains to far away places. I will not pull toys, dolls, chocolates or sweets. The little engine toys dolls were sad. Soon a great big strong engine passed by and all the toys and dolls said, Please great big strong engine, Please pull our train over the mountain. Our engine is broken down. The good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain would have any toys, dolls, chocolates or sweets on the surface. The great big strong engine said, Pull you, I am a freight engine. I pull big fine trains with big machines to far away places. I will not pull toys, dolls, chocolates or sweets. The little train Toys dolls were very sad. A little blue engine passed by and all the toys and dolls said, Please little blue engine, please run a train over the mountain. Our engine is broken down and the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain would have been toys, dolls, chocolates or sweets and help us. The little blue engine said, I am not very big or I have never been over the mountain. I tried to help. Puff, puff, the little blue engine pulled and tugged and slowly the train started. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Up, up, faster and faster, the little blue engine climbed until it reached the other side of the mountain. The little boys and girls, toys, dolls, cheered and thanked the little blue engine. I thought I could. I thought I could and I did. Do you know what I think? I think that all of you should try and be like that little blue engine. You know why? Because he had a big heart and was willing to do something that the other trains thought was not important. And he didn't give up. He tried and tried until he got to the other side of the mountain. Let's see how good your memory is. Have you ever been on a train? I have many, many times. Do you know there are many ways of getting around? You could skate around, you could scoot around, you could ride your bicycle and when you're old enough, you could ride a motorcycle 
or drive a car. Then there's the bus and the taxi. If you want to go far, far away, you fly in a plane. Here, take a look at these pictures. There is one form of transport that you could use on land and in water. Do you know what it's called? Well, it's time for our second story. This one is called The Boy Who Nearly Wished His Life Away. And here is Vashana to tell you all about it. Yanin couldn't stop wishing. He wished for all sorts of things to happen to himself and to other people. He wished his sister would turn into a toad, his grandmother would stop bossing him around, and he wished his father would be shorter so that he didn't need to look up at him any longer. Yanin wished nice things, nasty things, and sometimes silly things. You'd wish your life away, teased Yanin's sister. I wish you'd disappear down to sinkhole, replied Yanin. But his sister just laughed and ran away. I wish, I wish, you were a fish. I'll chop out your gizzards, squish, squish, squish. Hmm, Yanin looked up at the blue sky and wished it was purple. He wished the trees were red and the earth yellow. He wished the birds could bark and the snakes could sing. Yanin wished all evening until it was dinner time. I wish this was delicious chicken roast, said Yanin, as he ate a mouthful of fish. I wish you would have and dance, said, said Yanin's sister. Enough wishing at the dinner table, said Yanin's mother, and sent the children off to bed. That night, Yanin lay in bed and looked up at the night sky. I wish I could see through the dark, said Yanin. I wish the breeze was warmer and the frogs had tails and the lizards no legs. On and on Yanin wished until he fell into a deep sleep. Suddenly, Yanin found himself on top of a hill looking down into a valley. A bird swooped and glided by and Yanin said, I wish I could fly. Immediately Yanin was flying past birds, past clouds, through the atmosphere and into space. As Yanin sped on, it became hotter and hotter, and he was racing towards the sun. I don't want to be burned, screamed Yanin. I wish I could stop flying. Immediately, Yanin fell back through the atmosphere, past the birds, past the clouds, and towards Earth below. Ah, I wish I could stop flying. I wish I could float on air. 
needed. Yanin, ki Yanin came to a stop, leaned back and relaxed. After a while, he smiled smugly to himself. Since I can get whatever I wish for, I'm really going to have fun. After a while, Yanin was bored of floating and wanted to do something more exciting. As he looked around, he noticed a cave. I wish I could explore inside that cave, said Yanin. Immediately, a gust of wind flew Yanin straight inside the cave. But that cave was very, very dark. Oh, oh said Yanin. I wish the cave was lit up. Immediately, the cave was full of brightness and Yanin found himself standing right in front of a giant human-eating octopus. A long slimy tentacle grabbed Yanin, then another and another until Yanin was completely caught. He gasped. It was so difficult to make any wish. The octopus squeezed Yanin tighter and opened his big empty mouth. Yanin screamed in horror. I wish I was home. With a jolt, Yanin opened his eyes. His heart was pounding loudly and he was petrified. Mother, mother, he cried. I'm me, I'm back. It's so good to be home. I wish you couldn't speak, said Yanin's mother. It's three o'clock in the morning. But you don't know what you're saying, said Yanin. Never ever wish anything. I know what I want, muttered his sister. I wish, I wish you were a fish. I'll chop at your gizzard, squish, squish, squish. Phew! Thank God Yanin didn't wish his life away. It's fun to daydream and to be in your own world. But daydreams are not real. If you want your dreams to come true, you have to work hard. Not just dream your life away. Okay, more questions. We had stories about birds, elephants, rabbits, ants and grasshoppers. How about listening to Jess Ibrahim's story about a cat called Monto? Meow! Monto was a large, fat, dirty cat. Unlike most cats, she did not like washing. Her ginger fur had become very matted and had turned brown in colour. It covered old scars and was home to a host of fleas. I thought you stink! And over the years, the name Mota Yusting had stuck to her like the dirt in her fur. Mota Yusting loved the family, especially Nama, the sweet little girl who likes to play with her. Mota Yusting sorted out the cleaning, washing and ironing. She even tasted all the food first. Too salty, too spicy, too sweet. Yes, she did in the house and no one said thank you. Moto used to engage the cup in the right smell by rolling on it every day. She even rearranged the fabric on the sofa and even played the piano day and night. Yes, she did in the house and no one said thank you. All this cat was just broad cries of, Oh, Moto, you stay! One busy morning, Moto used to help to clean the kitchen with her muddy paws, but was shouted, Out of the house! She walked sadly to the back street and found herself there sitting on the old armchair. She decided to climb right inside and have a little cat nap. She was fast asleep when the junkyard man came with his horse, cut and took the armchair away. She was still fast asleep when the armchair was unloaded in the junkyard. Hours later, Mota Yusting woke up to the moon and the night shadows. A huge shape loomed out of the dark, snorting and breathing down her face. Wee! Wee! Ah! Ah! Help! A monster! 
shouted Mother Eustin. The dark monster laughed softly and moved closely. No, no, please, I came from the armchair and I'm lost. I just want to go home, pleaded Mother Eustin. I'm good and Larry, an old horse, but you are 2,604 clip clop from your house, calculated the horse wisely. That sounded like a very long way away to Monta Houston. I'll never see my family again, cried Monta Houston. Poor Monta Houston looked up at the stars, filled sky and felt herself being pulled towards the moon. She followed moonbeams all night until she came to a river. She ran along the bank, but there was no bridge. Splash! Splash! Monta Houston climbed, came up sneezing. Hatsu! Hatsu! and paddled into the opposite bank. She felt light and clean. Mother used to walk into the town like a lion with a fur of fluffy. Here at last, with the familiar sounds of the, of the ice cream man's bicycle bell, the milkman's truck horn, bon bon, the barking dogs, arf, 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 and the twitting song of birds, tweet, tweet, tweet. She was home, home sweet home, at last. Now it's her first. She hugged her until she squeezed nearly all her purse out of her. The, the family hardly recognized Monta Houston. They were amazed by her beautiful coat and stroked her soft and fluffy fur. They talk about her, her golden coat of many colors and how she smells sweet of herbs and roses. We must give her a new name, they said. He, she purred happily until she heard what it was. Mother, you smell sweet. Hmm, Montauk, you stink. Would you like people to call you, you stink? Well, if you don't keep yourself clean and tidy all the time, people will not respect you. Do you remember what Montauk saw in the night sky before she fell into the river with a splash? Well, she saw the moon and the stars. What else can you see in the night sky? Imagine walking through the jungle. It's dark as night. You can't see the moon or the stars. I wonder how you would walk. When you walk through the jungle, you go silently. You go slowly, slowly, slowly When you walk through the jungle You go carefully For you don't know what you may see When you walk through the jungle Don't go noisily, noisily, noisily When you walk through the jungle Don't go quickly Tiring, I'm going to take a break while you listen to this story told by Hannah called Too Greedy to Talk. Once upon a time, there lived a greedy couple in Maple Street. They were rich, but they disliked each other very much. They fought over everything they were given or things they owned. One day, someone new moved into Maple Street. His name was Joe Cool. Joe was welcomed by everyone in Maple Street. People came with little gifts for their new neighbor. Everyone, that is, except for the greedy couple. Mr. and Mrs. Greedy did not welcome Joe with any gift. Instead, they were very jealous of all the gifts Joe was receiving. Because of their selfishness, 
Joe decided to play a trick on them. Joe went to their house to introduce himself to them. The TV brought it. While he was there, he brought a freshly baked chocolate cake. Mmm. Mr. and Mrs. Greedy, on seeing the cake, became very nice and friendly to Joe. They were hoping that the cake was for them. However, Joe pretended to have accidentally left the cake on the porch. While Mrs. Greedy was cleaning the house up, she spotted the cake on the porch. She couldn't believe her luck, as she had thought that Joe had left the cake for her. As she was reaching for the cake, her husband also came out to the porch. On seeing the cake, he also wanted it. Because they were very, very greedy, they did not want to share the cake. Both wanted the cake all to themselves. They started fighting and arguing over the cake. Finally, they came up with a solution. Mr. Greedy said, Let's fight this out fair and square. Mrs. Greedy responded, Okay, let's do it. What's on your mind? Mr. Greedy knew that his wife liked to talk a lot. So he decided to have a contest. Let's have a contest. The person who keeps silent the longest shall have the cake all to themselves. Mrs. Greedy thought that this was a very easy contest and that she would surely win the cake. So for the next few hours, the Greedy's house was bathed in silence. Until the night came, that night a robber came to the house. The Greedy saw him but just stared at him not saying a word. On seeing this, the robber thought that they were blind. Happily, the robber helped himself to all the valuables in the house. While he was taking Mrs. Greedy's jewelry, Mrs. Greedy got so mad that she yelled out at her husband, You nincompoop! Aren't you going to stop that thief? Mrs. Suddenly, Mr. Greedy shouted out, You talk first! That kick is mine! You lose! Ha ha ha! Greedily, he grabbed at the cake and gobbled it all up. The thief got such a fright that he rushed out of the house with all the loot. Mrs. Greedy felt her for crying. Oh, what have we done? We were so greedy fighting over that cake that we have lost everything else. Mr. Greedy, on seeing his wife cry, too realized what he had done. He realized that he had lost so much more than what he had gained. He apologized to his wife and they promise to be better people in the future. Did you enjoy the story? I'm sure you did. But I hope you are not like that greedy couple on Maple Street. Questions again? People have been telling stories for thousands of years. People have been thrilled, entertained and even helped by listening to stories. So, I hope our stories have been of help to you in some way. There are many more stories that you can read at the library. So, next time you're there, pick up a storybook, read it and share it with your friends. Bye! When you walk through the jungle, you go silently, silently, silently. When you walk through the jungle, you go slowly, slowly, slowly. When you walk through the jungle, you go carefully. For you don't know what you may see